Jupiter Thunder says, uh, do you not understand that Hamas, Hezbollah and Iran do not want peaceful coexistence and that the Hamas charter calls explicitly for the destruction of Israel and the murder of every Jew in the entire world? The Islamo-fascist Arabs do not want peaceful coexistence. If they had entertained that idea at any point in the last 76 years, we would not be where we are today. There cannot be a two-state solution, all the while one state is trying to destroy the other. I don't understand why, 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 why you're actually telling me this, because I think I surely make it quite clear that I understand and entirely take that um, uh, on board. Uh, Zen Baby says, I think you're a good man struggling with a horrible dilemma. However, it is clear that the Guardian's article was horribly twisted. It is clear that if Hamas fighters could find a way of strapping kids as human shields onto themselves, they would. I saw people comparing how many children had died in Ukraine. Uh, that is for one good reason, that they did not build their military bases under hospitals and schools and actually tried to limit civilian casualties. It's well worth checking out Trigonometry's recent post on um, <coughs> on this. Uh, sorry, let me let, 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 let me try and move forward without um, ending up in a coughing splutter. Um, and uh, so th there are a number of um, of comments in the same sort of vein. And I wouldn't like anyone to think that my 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 attitude to the Israeli um, Hamas Hezbollah Iran situation uh, drops into the sort of moral equivalence that I deeply object to when people are trying to talk about the Ukraine Russian situation. Uh, in Ukraine and in in the Ukraine Kremlin situation, it is quite clear to me that there is a right and there is a wrong and that Ukraine has a right to defend itself. Uh, in the Israeli Hamas situation, it was quite clear to me at the beginning exactly the same thing, that Israel has a right to defend itself. But then I felt there was a point at which Netanyahu overstepped the mark significantly and uh, moved towards... Um, collective punishment which is not acceptable and now to a certain extent of course that was inevitable given the way that Hamas had constructed its its tunnels but um, but I think I think one has to be very clear that terrorism needs to be absolutely condemned and the failings of Iran promoting terrorism and this 45-year-old condemnation of Israel in anti-Semitic terms, uh, and the fact that Iran is an irresponsible theocracy, which is not thoroughly supported across the country, uh, those things need to be taken into consideration, as well as the failures of Netanyahu and um, the loss of a righteous response to a terrorist incident which gives the impression a of revenge and b of trying to maintain a state of war in order to maintain a grip on power um uh, uh, quite a, quite apart from the fact that one has to consider him as an irresponsible leader who failed to protect his people on october the 7th by the removal of security from around gaza to protect the illegal land grabs in the west bank and to protect the settlers who shouldn't be um settling in the places they're settling anyway uh I, I i i am fully aware of the of the issues so looking at moral equivalence first this is a rhetorical technique uh in which different actions are equated and suggesting they're morally compatible uh, even if one is more clearly I I even if one is more clearly justified or less harmful than the other it's a cheap way out of a political argument because it avoids the complexity of the issue at hand and instead of engaging with specific moral or ethical issues uh, moral equivalence reduces everything to a level of sameness which obscures the nuances and prevents meaningful debate and I hope I'm not going in that direction I hope at the same time I'm making it very clear uh, by articulating the failures of Hamas and Hezbollah 
as terrorist organizations known for their tactics in targeting civilians, resulting in widespread loss of innocent lives. Their use of violence, their um, their aggression against civilians under, undermines whatever legitimate political causes, including the Palestinian cause, that they are in some ways supporting. Uh, and, um, and and, and, and their, their, their actions spark cycles of retribution. Their governance, particularly Hamas in Gaza, has been marked by corruption, the misuse of international aid, the oppression of the local population, uh, and has contributed to suffering rather than relief. That is not the role of a legitimate government. The failures of Iran uh, go, go even further. Iran has a long-standing policy of supporting terrorist organizations, including Hezbollah, to, a, to an extent Hamas, um, as a means of exerting influence in the region, and its leadership frequently uses inflammatory, anti-Semitic statements about Israel, which stokes tensions and contributes to regional instability. As a theocracy, Iran's leadership operates with a level of ideological rigidity that often disregards human rights and suppresses dissent internally uh, while promoting an aggressive expansionist foreign policy. But at the same time, the failures of Netanyahu cannot be underestimated. Netanyahu's actions, particularly those involving the collective punishment of um, Gazans, uh, harming civilian populations, leaving people homeless, uh, appears vengeful and thereby diminishes Israel's moral standing. He's been accused of stoking perpetual conflict as a way to maintain his own political power and diverting attention from the legal issues, the serious legal issues that he faces. On October the 7th, his government's security failings allowed the devastating attack on Israeli citizens with reports indicating that, um, that, that the security services had been diverted from Gaza, from the border, to protect these illegal settlements in the West Bank. That is completely um, irresponsible. And this strategic misstep has contributed to, uh, I, I think, very, very clear criticism of his leadership and his ability to ensure the safety of his own people. Uh, he, is, he is an utterly irresponsible leader. And, uh, and one has to weigh, weigh the one up against the other. This isn't moral equivalence. Um, and this isn't equivocation. This is a, a, a clear statement. I hope that there are issues, um, issues and failings that need to be acknowledged. Um, and and it's, not, it's not a matter of saying one outweighs the other. Um, but it is a matter of, of, of recognizing that that there isn't, uh, that, that even if there was once a clear statement of this is the good side, this is the bad side, the, the um, irresponsibility of Netanyahu has blurred that division. And um, the, the, um, the, the, the record of anti-Muslim hate crime uh, the, the highest in the past 14 years, the record of anti-Semitic crime, the highest in a very long time, is, 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 is down to the inflamed tensions in the Middle East, and we, we ought to be working to resolving those rather than further um, inflaming the, the problem.